Well, hello everyone, and welcome to a new video uh, in this series of uh, PHP videos. Now, today we are going to talk about arrays. Um, before we, of course, jump into the uh, technical side of uh, how do we use arrays with PHP, it's a really good idea to understand what is an array. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here and try to explain the concept, but I'm pretty sure you guys already have an idea about what is an array. But let's just go refresh your information a little bit. So um, <clears throat> what is an array? Uh, traditionally, uh, let's say we want to uh, process information. Let's say information related to a student. What we can do, we need to create uh, a variable to store the name. <clears throat> Another variable to store, for example, your age. Another variable to store your address. And so on. <clears throat> All these information are basically related, let's say, to one object, which is a student. So we're talking about a student, let's say here, for example, an ID number. <clears throat> so I got a variable for a name, variable for an age, variable for an address, variable for an ID, and so on. Now, what if I have 10 students? Instead of one student, let's say I have 10 students. In this case, I need to have 10 variables for the name, 10 variables for the age, 10 variables for an address, and 10 variables for the ID. Well, how about if I have 100 students? Then I will need to have 100 names and 100 ages and 100 addresses and 100 IDs. So, as you can see here, the more objects you have to process, the more number of variables you're going to have to create. And believe me, you need to create variables in a program. Nobody can say anything bad about that. But the more variables you have in a program, the harder it's going to be to maintain uh, those variables and to process them, to have access to them, to understand them, because it's really going to be a, a really, really big mess of variables. So what we'd like to do, instead of having all our all data stored in individual variables, I would like to have what we call a container, for example. And this container, basically, uh, I am going to have all those hundred names, all these hundred ages, all these hundred addresses, all these hundred IDs stored in that container in a format that will make the process of accessing to them a lot easier. Not only a lot easier, it's again, or when it's going to be organized in one container, uh, accessing, processing is going to be a lot easier and it's going to take a lot of this 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 uh, a lot of what makes this program a little bit harder when having all these variables because again if you have in this case for example 400 variables then you're going to have to know those 400 variables and you need to know how to have access to them but what i can do i can put them in one container and all i have to worry about this container and how do i have access to the elements inside that container which is going to be a lot easier than worrying about 400 variables and this is again where the array will uh, be very helpful here. So arrays, just to let you know, it's not the only container that we have. Uh, I like to call it container, some other references, let me call it data structures. But either way, it's just a place where you actually group and collect your data and organize your data. So processing them, having access to them, updating them will be a lot easier comparing to having hundreds of variables individually. So that's what, what array is in general. It's a place where you can organize your data and you can store your data in, which basically will give you access uh, and you can process. And it's going to be a lot easier comparing to having that much of variables. Now, of course, we know variables. We know the variable by itself. It's a it's a place that's going to be where you're going to be using to store your data. Now we have a container, which basically is not going to be only used to store one value. It's going to be used to store multiple values. Um, we mainly have many different types of arrays. In this class, we're going to focus on two of them. 
uh, three of them actually, but let's just focus on the first easy one, which is a one-dimension array, and then we're going to talk about two-dimension arrays, and then after that we're going to talk about uh, associative arrays, which basically has nothing to do with the fact that it's one-dimension or two-dimension. You can have associated arrays that's one-dimension, associated arrays that's two-dimension. But for now, let's just focus on a single or one-dimension array, which is the easiest format uh, of arrays. Now, before we get to that point, let's just give you an idea here. And let me just have a new page here. Now, whenever you create a variable in general, especially, let's say, in PHP, you call this variable name. And let's say you assign a name of Adam to this uh, variable. Now, every time you want to use, you want to have access to Adam, you have access to Adam through or by using the variable. So, for example, when I come and say echo, and I will come here and type dollar sign uh, name, the PHP uh, engine will basically look for a variable inside the memory called name. And it's going to go to that space inside the memory. Let's just imagine this is the memory of your server. And inside the server, there is a space here. We call it name. And inside this name, we have the atom stored inside that memory. So when you echo the variable, you're basically issuing an order to the operating system to look into that space. And whatever you have inside that memory location, it's basically going to be printed on the screen. So this is how we treat variables in general. Now, with arrays, this is what you have to understand when it comes to arrays. It works a little bit different. When you have an array, uh, array is basically, as we said, a container that will hold multiple values. So instead of having only one value, you can have multiple. Could be two, could be three, could be four. In this case, let's just have three. I'm going to show you, of course, the syntax later. But let's just imagine this space here inside the memory is going to be reserved for the array, and we're going to call it names. Okay? I'm going to show you, of course, how exactly that's possible when we get to the syntax part. But just imagine now we have a spot in the memory, space inside the memory. I'm reserving three spaces here, and I'm calling them arrays. Of course, I can have here Adam. I can have Ali. I can have Steve. So here we go. Those are my three names that I have inside my array. One thing which is extremely important to understand with the traditional arrays, each one of those elements, they have what we call an index. And the index basically, and again, if you have any background in programming, this should be old news for you. Index represent the location of that element inside that array. So this is, for example, the first element, second element, third element inside that array. Index by itself, it's a number that you're going to use to have access to those elements. Okay? Now, what this is extremely important to understand that we start counting those indexes from zero. So Adam will be at index zero, Ali will be at index one, and Steve will be at index 2. Now, if I want to have access to the first element, I'm using the array names, and I'm going to associate that with the index value to have access to Adam. And then after that, if I want to have access to the second element here, for example, the Ali here, then I'm going to use the array name, associate that with the actual index, which is in the case is 1, so I'll get, I can have access to Ali. And same thing here with the Steve. I'm going to use the same Thing, the array name with the index to have access to that third element. So this is extremely important to understand when it comes to arrays. It's the array by itself. It's a container that can hold multiple values. And all these values are going to come under one name, and that is the name of the array. And if you want to have access to those values, manipulate them, change them, process them, all you have to know is the index of each element and once you know the index of the element, that basically means with the, with, the, with the knowledge of the name of the array, that will give you access to that element, and you should have no problems after that. So this is, again, what we need to understand about arrays. 
basically. And then now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some demonstration of how do we uh, handle arrays. Now what I'm going to be doing, instead of me going to my uh, notepad, I'm going to go straight to my server. Oh, let's see, I can't, I have to refresh it, of course. Um, let's go ahead and wait. So here we go. Change directory to the root. Right after that, change directory var, www, and then HTML. Now you guys remember I have a lot of files here. I am going to go ahead and create a new one. I'm going to call it touch. This time I'm going to call it array.php. This is where I'm going to actually manipulate my array. Now, of course, if I want to actually... Uh, I can change the permission if I want, but if I just type sudo, it will give me access to it so I can manipulate and change whatever I want. I'm going to come here and say nano, and I will say array.php. Now it's giving me this empty page. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to fast forward this after I'm done, but let me just go ahead and, and write everything. So uh, duck type HTML 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 head let's close the head body and then close body okay here's the Space, question mark, PHP, question mark, close. So here's my PHP section. This is where I'm going to be writing my uh, arrays. Now, to create an array in PHP, the idea here is very simple. What you're going to have to do, basically, is to create, just like how we create a variable. Oops, not this one, this one, okay. Create a variable. Let's call it, for example names equal now you to create an array you need to call a function called array so you type array and you open a parenthesis and you close it and you put a semicolon here and now you're going to tell me what elements do you have in that array for example i'm just going to use the same example that i had before adam semicolon ali and then after that i will have um, Steve and this is me creating my array okay now um, if I want to have access to those elements let's say I want to print them on the screen um, as I said we have the indexes values that will give you access to them so if I come here and say echo and I'll just start with the names stored in the array names are and I'm just going to come here and do the following. I'll put a dot and look what I'm going to do here. You're going to come here and do the following. You're going to put the dollar sign, names, you open the square brackets and you put the index. So here we go. This will give you access to those elements. So this is going to give me access to Adam. After that, I'm going to put a dot and then I'll put a double quotation here. Let's put a comma space. And then I'll put another dot, and I will come here and have access to the second element. So names again. This time I'm going to put one, and then uh, dot, and this time I am going to put and, and then I'm going to put my third item, which is, uh, what do we call it? Oh, yeah, uh, dollar sign, names, and you put two here. And let's put... Uh, semicolon um, for some reason it went all the way down to the next line which is okay uh, I think I can fix this let me just push this a little bit back okay so here we go and let me just echo a BR break line so I'll go to the next line after that, we'll sum my clock. And here we go. This is me creating an array of three values. And this is me having access to those elements, um, <clears throat> as you can see here. Let me save my work. 
Control X. Do you want to save it? Yes. And now let me just cat it. And you can see here it works perfectly fine. Remember the file called array.php. So this is my server website. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here and type array.php and I should it should work. Let's see if it's going to and here here it is. The names stored in the array names are Adam, Ali, and Steve. I think I have to add a space here. I missed a space here, which is okay. Let me just go ahead and, and, and fix that really quick. I just need to put a space at the, at the end of it. Now, you may ask a question. Well, this is obviously working fine, but this is in case you have only three items, and I had to write that. What if I have 300 items? How do I have access to them? Do I have to go manually? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 300? The answer would be no, of course. The thing that you should know here at this point, that arrays and for loops, they work perfectly together. So um, arrays, remember, and loops, they work perfectly together together. So what we need to do here for this case, if I want to get the same results, but instead of me typing the whole thing here, and remember here, this will work for three items, but just like I said, what if you have 300 elements in that array instead of just three? It doesn't make sense for you to go manually and write them one, two, three, four. So here's what we can do. And this is, again, something we do usually when it comes to arrays. I can create a loop, and I'm going to show you two formats of that loop. And using uh, those loops, I can have access to those elements and I can make it adaptive. So I don't need, I really don't need to know how many items do I have to be able to do that. So what I'm going to come here and say, um, let me see here. My, okay. I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it count. And this is very, very important. We have a function called count. And you can put the name of the array and put semicolon. And let me change this because it doesn't uh, make sense to call both of them the same thing. So I'm going to say name count. So what is this going to do? This, this line of code here. This line of code basically is going to tell me how many items do I have in that array. Okay, so since now I have a number of items in this array, what I can do after that is uh, I can use a for loop. And this for loop basically will let me have access to those items one by one using a for loop. So let's go ahead and show you how do I do that. Now remember here, I could come here and say for, and I'm going to show you two options. And I'm going to come here and create a counter. For example, I'll call it i. And I will set i to equal 0. Remember, we use 0 because the first element starts with 0. And I will put a dollar sign i. And I will say, as long as this i is less than name count. And then after that, we will just put dollar sign i. We'll put plus plus, which basically means increase it by one. So let's go ahead and have a look here again. What did I just did here? This is a for loop, which we covered before. And I'm starting my account, my counting from zero. Now remember here, this name counts, it should give me three. Because I have three items here. Now, um, this is basically going to go through all the values of i until this condition here of i is less than name count is false. So let's start with this. Name, name count, remember, that's the value of 3. 0 is less than 3. Correct. 1 is less than 3. Correct. 2 is less than 3. Correct. So it's going to show me the in, at index i equals 0, i equal 1, i equal 2, which basically this is what I'm looking for here. And when you get to 3, basically this condition is going to be false. You're going to skip everything. Now, it makes more sense if I call this one index... IND, IND, IND. And let me just come here and start showing those uh, names on the screen. So I can come here and say echo. And I'll just put the dollar sign uh, car uh, name. 
and I'll put here in this area, I'm going to use index as my variable. So it's going to show me the name. And then after that, I'm going to come here and just echo. And I'll go have a space, for example. Let's just go ahead and do that. Um, let's put a space and put semicolon. Well, you know what? I, I really don't need to do that. I can just do it here, dot space. Hopefully, this will not give me any errors. And then uh, they're basically going to be printed next to each other. And then after that, I can come here and put an echo break line. Uh, BR, uh, semicolon. So let's go ahead and have a look at this one. I'm supposed to see the names printed next to each other, just like I had before, but it's not going to show me the names stored in the array are. I can do that if I want to. I can come here and start with an echo here. Let me just do that. Echo. Uh, the names printed using an array. Uh, sorry, a for loop. And I'll put semicolon. I hope I didn't miss any semicolon. All semicolons are there. Yes, they are. Control X, save it, print. And let's go ahead and refresh the page. And here we go. The names printed using a for loop. Adam, Ali, and Steve. And you see there's a space between them. And now, basically, if you have 300 uh, items in that array, I remember here, this array that I created, I just created myself, but it could be uh, something you read from a text file. It could be something you re read from a, from a database. So those type of data you're going to be retrieving to your program, they may re be really, really big. So making it automated the way I'm showing you here, it's really, really uh, good practice. So here we go. This is, again, what we mean by indexes. And this will give you access to those elements one by one using a for loop. Now, there was a part when we were talking about loops um, in week two or something where I didn't mention, I, I mentioned a for each loop, but I didn't really get to uh, talk about it because for each loops are mainly associated with um with a race. So now it's the time to talk about that. Um, I'll try my best to see if I can actually post this uh, text file uh, when I'm done. But let's go ahead and get back here. So what is a for each loop? For each loop work in a different way. Now, and let me just, uh, maybe it would be better If I go back to my paint, you know what? No, no, no. If I go back to paint, I have to go back here and start refreshing the page and all this. So let me just go here straight. For each, work in a very... It works. It gets the job done just like any for loop. But the difference between a for loop and a for each is the following. With for loop, what am I doing here? I'm having access, direct access to the array item. So this is me accessing to the first item. This is me in the second iteration. I'm accessing to the second item and the third item. With a for each, what I'm, what I'm going to be doing basically, I'm going to be copying the value from the array to another variable that I'm going to create. I'm going to call it temp, for example. And then temp, I can process it. But this basically doesn't mean that I can have a direct access to that array. The elements of the array basically will be available, uh, but as I said, I don't have direct access to them. It has to be done. Uh, uh, I'm going to be having access to other elements, uh, another variable, not the variable of the, uh, of the array itself. Again, this may not be really, really clear to you, so I'm just going to demonstrate the whole thing in a sec. Um, to do so we need to go ahead and create an array, sorry, a, a for loop, but this time it's going to call for each, which basically means for each item. And I'm going to be using this very similar format that I have for. What I'm going to be doing in this area here is I'm going to have to create a new uh, uh, before we do that, I have to type the name of the array. 
names, that's what I called my, as, and I'm going to create here a variable, uh, let's call it temp. Okay, now I can come here and do the following. I'm just going to go and do exactly what I did. Temp, uh, sorry, echo, dollar sign, temp dot, space, double quotation, semicolon, and let me just go in this area and follow that with echo with a break line, br, semicolon. So what did I just did here? Let's just look here. This for loop will give me access to the array items one by one using the index. This, this part here, what's going to happen, uh, every time I go in every single loop, the items are going to be copied from the array and it's stored inside the temp and I'm here processing the temp. So temp could be changed, could be processed, could, you can do anything to, you want to a temp, but that will not mean that you're changing the values of Adam, Ali, or Steve here. You're, you're manipulating temp, which is an, an, an independent variable. So um, let's see how is that going to work. And I'm going to show you an example. Let's say um, I'm going to come in this area and I'm just gonna come here and echo another message let's hope it's gonna work the names printed using uh, a what is and a for loop no let me change this it's a for loop uh, for each loop each loop and I put a semicolon and don't forget that. Um, I really hope this is going to work. Hopefully, I didn't make any uh, mistakes here. Control X, Y, and now let me go and refresh the page, and it worked. Look at that now. The the names printed using for each loop: Adam, Ali, and Steve. Now, just let me just go back here and just explain something. Imagine, imagine you decided instead of printing those names, you, you wanted to change them. You can change them all to be uh, X, Y, Z. If you apply any change here using this for loop, since you're having direct access to the array, you will be able to manipulate those values. For each will not give you direct access. You basically will have access to the item, for example, Adam, and Adam is going to be stored inside temp, and now you're processing temp. And then after that, you have access to Ali. Ali is going to be assigned to temp, and now you're processing temp. So you're not processing the, the, the value inside the array directly. You're, you're processing a copy of it. So whatever you're going to manipulate, that copy will not be reflected on the original value. So that's something you have to put under your consideration. And those here, as, you can, as, as I said, those are the four loops uh, with arrays, and this is for each and uh, that's basically how loops works. Now, after that, I'm going to be moving on and talk about two other subjects. The first one is going to be uh, associative arrays. And then after that, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, sorting arrays. And then after that, I'm going to come here with an example. I'm going to create a text file, and I'm going to read the information from the text file and then store them inside an array. And then I'm going to use the array to print my data in a form of a table. And this is uh, one of these operations that we do a lot in PHP. Your data is going to be stored in a database or it's going to be stored in a text file. You're going to have to read them from a text file. Again, let's imagine you're reading, let's say, a thousand value. Now, you there's no way you can create a thousand variables uh, uh, in, your, in your PHP program. That's just too much variables. So what we do, we create an array and we store the values inside that array. And then after that, uh, once you have the data stored inside the array, now you can freely process that array as you want. So, what is an associative array? Now, associative array basically makes a lot of sense to know what it is. Uh, now, let's just look here, for example. I have names, Adam, Ali, and Steve, and I'm having access to those variables or those values using the indexes. Now, who said zero should be associated with Adam? Or who said one is supposed to be associated with Ali? Or two is associated with Steve? Basically, those are index values. And this is basically how arrays work. Associative arrays basically realize maybe there is a better way to handle that. 
Now, before I get to that point, let me just tell you something here. This one is more efficient and faster than this one. But again, just remember, we can use this one if you want to process the data without affecting the original values. So you go with for each. But if you are actually, if you want to manipulate the data themselves inside the array, so whatever change is going to be applied here will be reflected on the original values, then for loop is what you go for. So now let's put that on the, on the side and let's just focus on um, what is an associative array. Well, the associative array, and let me just uh, go here to the paint to explain that concept. And let me just go and control uh, new. Imagine I want to create an array, and this array, I'm going to store ages of students. So I can come here and do this. Age and equal array. And I'll come here and put three array ages. So this is six, for example. This is 12. And this is 76. Okay. Now... Remember here, those are ages, 6, 12, and 76. If I want to have access to age of 0, age of 6, for example, that's index 0, that's index 1, that's index 2. Now, if I can associate each one of those ages with something beside the index, something will present this number instead of just a number here like zero or one two that would be a good idea for example if i can associate these numbers with names for example adam is six years old ali is 12 years old and steve is 76 years old okay so how do i do that with arrays with the uh, with arrays well we have something called associative arrays and the associative arrays basically work that way. And you really don't have to change that much. It's, it's really not that complicated to, uh, to get. The associative arrays are very simple. Um, <clears throat> when you declare the array the way you see it here, and instead of just going 6 and 12 and, and 76, what we like to do, and I'm going to just write it here and then I'm going to repeat it, later i'm going to come here and say adam and you close adam and then you put an arrow and this arrow that you're going to generate basically is equal sign and then greater than and then you put six semicolon and of course six you can i would recommend to use text most of the time but you can you can put it as uh, without a double quotation now here i'm going to come and say ali Close that, code him, and then put 12. And then finally, we'll put Steve, arrow, and 76. And that's it. So now, whenever we want to have access to 6 or 12 and 76 with associative array, you don't have to use the indexes anymore. You can use the name. So I can come here and say dollar sign age. And I'll put Adam, that will give me the value of 6. So now I have access. That will, uh, again, if I want to print, that is going to show me app. Now you may ask a question now what is the whole point? You, if you can have access to them using 0 and 1 and 2, um, why would you go with associative array? Well, this is basically going to improve the readability of your code, it will make the, your code easier for people to read it. And instead of because again, if you put age of zero of index zero, people may not know what you're talking about. But now I have an idea that oh, so Adam is six years old, and Ali is twelve years old, and Steve is seventy six years old. That's the whole point of associative arrays. Now let's go ahead and put that in action and see how my PHP file uh, gonna look like if I want to do that. Um, let's see here. Uh, yep, it's still working. So I have to come here and create that array. So I'm going to go age equal array. And then I'm going to come here. And uh, of course, it comes with a little bit of complications. It doesn't go that smooth. So I'll just go ahead and show you how does it work. So first of all, I'm just going to come here and say Adam. 
And then remember, you got the arrow. And then you put six here. And then after that, we'll just do the same thing here with a Lee. And then we'll put 12. And then after that, I will go and type uh, Steve. And then we'll put an arrow. And then we'll put 76. Now, before I continue, there's something you have to understand. Uh, unlike other programming languages that you may already know, when you create an array, for example, in C++ or Java, uh, you have to have all your variables from the same data type. But with, with Python, that's not, uh, sorry, with PHP, that's not the case. You can have a mix and match between values. values. That's totally acceptable. And uh, this is a big deal because in other programming languages, you cannot mix and match between data types. For example, here I can have Adam, Ali, and Steve, all strings. I can change, for example, add numbers here if I want to. Still going to work with no problems. Even though this is acceptable, but it's really not recommended. Again, this will just, for the, for the purpose of readability of your code, it's really a good idea to just have all your variables in, in one data type and one format. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, just to give you an idea here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come say echo, and I'm going to say ages, age, sorry. And I'll put here Adam, and I'll follow that with a dot. Let's put a break line and put semicolon. So this here would give me access to Adam. Now, if I control X this, save it, get out, refresh the page, and it's telling me that Adam is six years old. Now, um, can I use for loops here? Well, let's, let's, let me just be straight here. For loops will not work, but for each will work. Because for loops, as you can see here, indexes are associated with, uh, with numbers, zero all the way to two. But here, I don't have numbers anymore. I'm, I'm having, uh, uh, what they call it, keys here. And the keys here are going to be used to have access to the element. So we don't use for loops with them. We usually use for each with associated arrays. Now, the format, of course, is not going to be exactly the same. And you have to pay attention to that format. So in this area, what are we going to do? First of all, we have to type. I'm, I'm going with age. So you start with the age. And you put as. So remember here, just like we did before, age as. Now, since I have keys and I have values, um, previously I put temp, I have to type, let's see here, key, which basically will be used to store those values, Adam, Ali, and Steve. And then I can put values. Dollar sign values. So this for loop basically not only going to give you access to the 6 and the 12 and the 76, it's also going to give you access to the, the, the key items, which is Adam, Ali, and Steve. So let me just go ahead and do that echo. I'll just print the key is and put a dot here. And then after that, I'll put a dollar sign and I'll put uh, age, uh, not sorry, not age, uh, dollar sign key. So this will give you access to the key item. And then after that, I can put a space, put a dot, and I'll put here a dollar sign value. And uh, let me just go ahead and follow that with a break line. BR, and put semicolon. The key is, and then, well, you know, I, I don't think I should use the key is. I'll just straight show me the key, follow that with an arrow, and it's going to show me the value. So that will give you an idea. Or you know what? I'll make it a little bit. Just come here and say is. I'll follow that by years old. 
brake line. I'm going to put a dot here, and this is a brake line to go to the next line. So here it is going to show me the key, which represents the name in this case, is six years old. Ali is 12 years old. Steve is 76 years old, and so on. Let's go ahead and save this. Yes. Let me go back here and save my work. And here it is. Adam is, oh, wait a minute. It didn't print the value for some reason. Uh, what did I do? Here's value. Oh, values. Okay. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's change the, take the S away. Control X again. Y. Yes. Let's see if he likes it. Now, yep, here it is. Adam is six years old. Ali is 12 years old. Steve is 76 years old. Okay, so this is associated arrays, and this is how it works with for each loops. And uh, as you can see here, it's not that complicated. It's really simple, really straightforward. After I'm done, of course, I'm going to show you an example of how do I put this in a real uh, application. Um, we have a concept of sorting arrays. And to sort an array... Um, there's a function called sort, and, and that basically will sort the array. So, um, and again, just remember here, if you're going to enter the values in a form of uh, uh, strings, so it's going to basically sort them depending on the alphabetic order of those, vari of those characters, um, or basically if you have values, it will do it that way too. We have a lot of different kinds of sort algorithms. We have sort, we have reverse sort, Sort basically going to store them from the smallest value to the greatest value, reverse from the greatest value to the smallest value. And uh, we have, I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of other types of sorts, I'm just going to keep it that simple. So um, let's go ahead and have an example. And then after that, we'll be, I'm going to be talking about the two dimension arrays. And then after that, I will show you uh, an example. So let me just go back here and I'm going to create an array. And this array that I'm going to create is for the purpose of demonstration, I'll call it numbers equal array and I'm just going to come here and store values of 7, 4, 2, 9, 10, 1, and 3. So here it is. This is my array. That's simple. Now I want to sort it. So I'm going to come here and say sort and you put dollar sign numbers. Semicolon. Now after that I'm going to go ahead and create a for each Uh, I was, yeah, for each, that will work. Dollar sign numbers as dollar sign temp. I think I'm, I'm going to try to copy this uh, and, and put, post this, vid, uh, this file uh, when I'm done. Um, I'm just going to try to echo uh, dollar sign temp dot Follow that with a space, semicolon. And then after that, I will echo uh, break line, br. And semicolon, of course, I have to put. And here we go. So this is me creating an array of numbers. And then I call the function called sort. Now remember the values here you see, 7, 4, 2, 9. Let's see how is that going to sort them. And let's go ahead and save my work. If I refresh the page, and here it is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 9, 10. So it's actually sorted. Now, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come here and change this from sort to R sort. So it's going to be descending order. Control X, Y. Now if I go refresh the page, and now you can see it's in the reverse order. And that's how we sort uh, items. Now, the last part I'm going to be talking about is the multi-dimension. Of course, after that, I'm going to go to my example. Uh, multi-dimensional arrays, you can have as much dimensions as you want, but we're just going to focus on a two-dimension array. Now, the two-dimension array is really, really not that complicated. It's basically an array that contains elements inside it, like array of arrays. Let's just put it that way. So, what do I mean by that? Um, 
let me just go and and I'm gonna go and have some space here. So this is my area where I'm gonna play and create my array, two dimension array. Now, just to give you an idea about what is a dimension array. Now, previously when I created an array, for example, I said Adam, Ali, and Steve, this is basically a, a one dimension array. A two dimension array will look something a little bit different. For example, let's say I want to create uh, a list of games that I like and the price of that game, for example. So, for example, I would say God of War and I will say the price of that game is 35 and I'll say, for example, Blood Born let's say this is $20 and I can come here and say Dark Souls and I'll put this $37 okay and I'm just gonna add something here let's say God of War has a rate of 10 this one has a rate of 9 this one has a rate of 7 for example this here represent a two-dimension array now each one of those by itself it's an array. So when I put them all together in one array, that basically a two dimension array. Now, to have access to the elements, for example, let's say I'm gonna call this games. If I'm gonna call this games, um, uh, what I can do now, since I'm calling it a games, uh, uh, if I want to have access to every one of those items one by one, all I have to do is to know what row and what column I'm trying to have access to. So this is, for example, GOW is row number zero, column number zero. This 35 is row number zero, column number one. This 10 here is row number zero, column number two. So you use indexes, but in a different way. So for example, if I want to have access to this 20 here, this basically is going to be games. You put two square brackets and you come here and say, this is going to be row number one, column number one, and that will give you access to this 20. And that's what we mean by two dimension arrays. We use two dimension arrays a lot in, in PHP, just to let you know. So now if I go back to my PHP, and let me try to create the same example that I had there. So I'm going to come here and say games equal array. You know, I'm just going to make it simple, okay? I'm going to come here and say array. This is my first array. I can come here and say this is my second array. And this will be my third array. And for each one of those, I'm just going to put two values. I'll put here, for example, 1 and 100. I'll put here 2 and 50. And here I'm going to put 3 and 7, 8, 6, something like that. So this is my array. Um, now, if I want to have access to those items, now this is going to be a little bit, little bit complicated. You're going to have to understand this. Since I have two dimension arrays, then a single for loop would not be enough anymore to have access to those items. I need to have a, a, a nested for loops. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me just go back to the syntax. I need to have a for loop that will simply scan those rows one by one. And when you are at the first row, you need to scan the columns one by one. Once you're done with all these columns for the first row, you move to the second row. And then you scan the columns one by one. And once you're done with the columns of the, that second row, you move to the third row and so on. To be able to get this done, you need to have what we call a nested for loop. And I'm gonna show you how does it work. I'm gonna come here and say four, uh, not integer, sorry. I will just call this one r equals zero for the rows. And you know it makes more sense if we just actually use the word row. 
set that to zero. Now we need to find out how many rows do we have here. Uh, basically three. So as long as row is less than three. And then after that, dollar sign uh, row plus plus. You open a curly brace, you go all the way down, and you close it. Um, after that, what you can do here, uh, let's just put an echo message. And I'll just say row number, and I'll put a dot saw, and I'll just put row, and then dot, and I'll put a space with comma. So this is just going to print a message on the screen. It's going to show which row I am at right now. Um, right after that, um, I can come here and create another for loop. Now, my second for loop is going to be for columns. Remember, you scan rows, and for each row, you go to columns. So I'll just say col, set that to zero. Now, col is less than how many columns do I have? I have two columns for each one of them. And then dollar sign col plus plus. What I'm going to be doing in this area here is that I am just going to print the values and I'll put space. So echo. And in this case, look what I'm going to do. It's called games, even though I don't know where I call it games, but it's OK. Games. And you put dollar sign row. And you put the other dollar sign for the column. And then put a dot and put a space here and put a semicolon. So it's going to print the first value and the second value, the first column value and first co uh, second column value in that two-dimension array. Right after you're done with that, it's very important for it to look like a two-dimension is every time you're done with scanning one row, you have to go to the second one. So the second one needs to be in a new line. So echo, and let's put a break line here, and put semicolon here. So this will give me access to those items uh, and it's going to present them in a form of a row. So let's just go ahead and save it and see how is that going to go. Why? And uh, let me go ahead and, and save this. And here it is. Row number 0, 1 and 100. Row number 1, 2 and 50. Row number 3, 3 and 6, 786. So this is, again, how a two-dimension array is actually Create it, and this is how you have access to it. You have to go with for loops. And it's not only one for loop. It's what we call a nested for loops. Um, the last part is basically going to be about an application. How do I read uh, files from, uh, from a text file, and then how do I print them in a form of a table inside my HTML page? I'm going to be doing that using a new file. So... Uh, Let's move on to that part. OK, so um, I decided that I am going to get everything done, and then I'm going to explain um, how do we read from a file and store the values in it in an array, and then print them on a table. Um, so what I did here, I created a text file. I called it uh, games.txt. Now let me just show you that file, cat games.txt. You'll see that here I have four games. Uh, each game has uh, the year where it was published and then the price uh, next to it. So I got of War, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 2, and The Last of Us Part 2. I decided to go with underscore because uh, this is going to be helpful when we're going to be talking about strings for next week. Um, what I'm going to be trying to do here, just to give you an idea, I'm going to try to read those games line by line and store them in an array. So my array is going to basically have, supposed to have four elements. Each element represent the games of, uh, sorry, the data or information about a game. So uh, let me just go ahead and show you uh, my file. So sudo nano and then games.php. Now there's a game .php file, games.php file that I just created and I completed it. And here is that file. Now, 
the first part here that you should notice here inside the head I have a style element this is where I'm just gonna go and give the table since I'm using tables I want to give the table styles I'm just gonna focus on the border of that table and the cells of that tables they will have two pixels and the solid and uh, a green color this is not a PHP this is HTML now in this part this is a PHP part what am I doing here number one I created an object file and I opened that games.txt file to read from so that would be the first step that I did here second step here I created an empty array I called it games and the third step here I actually read the file okay line by line and I stored every time I read a line I added as an element inside my games array you can see here I didn't have to put any indexes or anything the PHP will understand what you're trying to do here you're trying to read the line from the file and store it inside that array now after that I decided to show the number of items uh, that I read from the file and after I did that I noticed that the number of items were five now you may ask the question, but you just showed me the file. There were just only four values. But here's the thing. I'm reading that file, and as I'm going with the reading process, I'm going to get to the last line in that file. The last line in that file doesn't contain anything, but it's going to still be read by the program and it's going to be treated as something. So that something is going to be stored inside that game array or games array. So when you when you count the number of items, it's going to tell you actually there are five. In reality, we know the first items actually there are data. The last one, it's empty. There's no data in the last item. So that's why I had to subtract it from one. After that, I decided to print that values. And now in this section here, this is me creating a table, just like any HTML table. You have the table uh, 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 tags the, the opening and the closing table tags now inside the table tags we have TRs which is table rows and we can have multiple rows but in this case since I'm I'm using PHP and I'm gonna have to go with the for loop because in reality let's let's face it this games.txt file it could have five or six or seven or eight or ten I don't know how many games are there so what am I doing here instead of manually doing it I'm using a for loop and that for loop here is basically gonna go as much as there are uh, elements in the inside that file so I have a for loop that's gonna go for counters now for each row sorry for each uh, value you're gonna read I'm gonna create a row table row this is the opening this is the closing and then inside it there's a TD which is the table data and inside the table of data I'm gonna be printing the game content information so this is gonna be row one row two row three no far uh, three, four, and then for each row there is only one columns, and that column is going to be the information of that uh, game that I just read. Now, as I said, next week we are going to actually I'm uh, I'm going to use the same uh, example here, and I'm going to break down this row. And instead of having the the, the game and the year and the price in the same uh, unit or same uh, element, I am basically going to break it down into three elements, and I'm going to have three rows by th uh, sorry four rows by three columns. And then I'm, I can I can process it the way I want later, and I'm going to show you how is that going to be done. But for now, since we didn't talk about strings, and we didn't talk about how do you break down a string, we'll just keep it as simple as this. So this part here, starting from this line all the way to this line, this is just me creating a table. And instead of me manually writing uh, the, 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 the table rows one by one, I'm using a for loop. And that's the beauty, actually, of PHP, that you don't have to do it manually, especially here. Let's imagine the, the games.txt file has 100 of those games. Does that mean that you're going to have to go and manually write echo tr, echo tr for each one of them? No. That's the beauty of PHP, that I, I can store the games inside an array and have a for loop that goes through the elements. And instead of me repeating this, this three lines that I'm showing you here, those three lines, for 100 times, it's just going to be repeated by this for loop. And then after that, I'm closing it, of course. And then if you go all the way back to the top, I changed the uh, the format or the style of that table. And let me just save it. And now if I go to my login, uh, my my server page, if I just come here, remember the page called games.php. And you can see here, I got that table. Now, as I said, next week, I am going to break down each one of those rows into three columns, and you will see how do I format it and make it look a little bit better. So um, this will be the end of this video, and I'll see you guys next week.